More police oversight could be coming to New Jersey, but only in certain towns. Lawmakers this week advanced a bill that will increase accountability for cops who are in trouble by creating local civilian complaint review boards and granting them subpoena power. But as senior correspondent Joanna Gagas reports, advocates had to make concessions on where those boards will exist in order to get it passed. To have subpoena power is power. Assemblywoman Angela McKnight is thrilled to see a bill that she's championed move out of committee this week that would create Civilian Complaint Review Boards, or CCRBs. They would have the authority to investigate alleged instances of police misconduct and give them subpoena power, which advocates have long said is key to CCRB's success. Newark, New Jersey, they have a CCRB, but they don't have subpoena power. And a CCRB without subpoena power is mute, is powerless. The bill A1515 was introduced to this legislature in 2020, although previous versions have been introduced going all the way back to the 1960s. But this bill faced major challenges and was modified to include some key changes. First, rather than CCRBs being allowed throughout the state, they'll only be in four of New Jersey's largest cities, Newark, Patterson, Jersey City, and Trenton. The rollout will now be a five-year pilot program and the CCRBs will now have to wait 120 days to start an investigation, allowing for police internal affairs to investigate an incident first. The CCRB is not to be a replacement for the police. We need the police. I love the police. So what we're doing is allowing them 120 days to start their investigation. Now, after 120 days, the CCRB will be able to conduct their investigation and then it will be running concurrently. So we're just giving them, um, you know, let them do their due diligence within 120 days. Larry Hamm has long advocated for civilian complaint review boards with subpoena power. Hamm, who is running against Senator Menendez for his U.S. Senate seat, says these changes were an important compromise to finally push the bill through committee, but he's not happy with the 120-day delay. It makes the review board look like a junior partner to internal affairs. And this is problematic. The whole reason people want police review boards is to enhance police accountability. And if the major control still remains with the police department, some feel that accountability would be to some degree compromised. Civilian review board members would be appointed by mayors and required to undergo training before they can serve. But police unions say this training pales in comparison to that of their internal affairs units, and they oppose the bill altogether. Providing a civilian review board with uh, subpoena power ultimately gets to be almost the fourth bite at the apple to, to go after a police officer who has been alleged to uh, of, of wrongdoing. Whether you look at at the internal affairs process, which is, which is overseen and can be can be taken over by the county prosecutor, in serious instances, you've got s situations that go to the attorney general by law that are investigated by grand juries. Rob Nixon from the NJPBA says the attorney general's list of recent reforms to police oversight have been sufficient to hold officers accountable. And when an officer has gone through all that, or maybe they've they've been they've been they've been punished for that and given their suspension or giving their time off. And now you're going to go and bring in civilians who might not be happy with that result uh, and, and want to have a do over. We would ask, where's the officers due process rights? With such strong feelings on either side, the road is still long for this bill that needs to get through a full assembly vote next week and then make its way through the Senate all before this legislative session expires. I'm Joanna Gagas, NJ Spotlight News.